All guests on Saslo Show 2.0 brought to us by the official beer of the program. You know we're talking Johnny Cuba, European roots with that Caribbean soul. Pick up a refreshing German lager in a can. Pick up a six-pack. You Use the Johnny locator, johnnycuba.us. Find the nearest location to you. Make sure you always drink responsibly. And don't forget Johnny Cuba's mantra. Stay tranquilo. Our pal is CBS Sports fantasy football expert, Jamie Eisenberg. We have week eight NFL getting going tonight. Thursday night football, Vikings and Rams. First up, Jamie, how are you? Good morning. Good to see you. Everything okay on your end? You doing all right? Everything's great. How about yourself? I'm doing okay. I'm hanging in there. So a uh, little annoyed about the heat last night. I'll get past it. We got the Panthers tonight. I'm very excited about that. And, of course, we got the football. First, though, uh, from a from a Dolphin fan perspective, I know you, you've grown up a Dolphin fan. Two are returning this week. I mean, now I can watch these games. I can feel like I can get something exciting in front of me. It's been three hours of my life the last five weeks where it, it, it's been torture, Jamie. It's going to be fun to see them back. I love Tyreek's excitement yesterday, you know, saying we're back, baby. Um, you know, with, uh, you know, I think a spin towards fantasy football when he said, start me, um, it's going to be fun. You know, I mean, this is what this offense has been lacking is, is quarterback play. And, and, you know, most teams, they lose their quarterback. Things go a little bit South. This has just been awful, you know, and it's really a, a testament to the front office and, and what they failed to do in terms of getting a, a quality backup quarterback. But I think, you know, now you get hopefully to a healthy for the rest of the season. And look, the AFC East is still winnable. I don't think they'll catch Buffalo, but they have a chance. Uh, wild card is certainly within reach. You know, they're just gonna have to string it together some wins, you know, losing to the Colts, losing to the Titans, you know, those are going to be losses that come back to haunt them. But now they have an opportunity here to hopefully get hot and see what they can do if they can make a playoff run. But, you know, from a fantasy perspective, this is now the, uh, you know, everything is just going to be, you know, all systems go, you know, Tyree kill went from a borderline starter to number two in my rankings. Jalen Waddle was unplayable to top 24. You know, A-Chan and, and Mostert, you kind of been have used you kind of used them. Um, you know, Mostert coming back two games ago and, and A-Chan, you know, battling through the concussion. But uh, now you just expect everything to be, you know, on the table. Mike McDaniel gets his whole playbook, and, and hopefully we see the, the best of the Dolphins for the rest of the year. Has your opinion of Mike McDaniel changed at all this season? A little bit, you know, you saw the first couple of games, he was, it, it seemed like he was not used, necessarily using a different offense for, you know, Tyler Huntley and Skylar Thompson for the games they were in there. It felt like he was trying to run the same thing. And then after the bye week, you saw a little bit of a change. Um, but really, I, I think, you know, he, he was handcuffed, you know, when, when you have the quarterbacks that he was dealing with, not to a tongue of Iloa, you can't run the same type of system. So it, it just was, I, I think, a failure from the top down, you know, I mean, he didn't adjust. The front office didn't give him the right tools to, you know, be successful. And, and look, they they went all in, I think, for last year specifically. But, you know, trying to piece it together with the defense that they have, you know, not having edge rushers and, you know, dealing with injuries, offensive line being a little bit of a patchwork situation. This team is based on their skill players. And when you don't have the quarterback, the skill players don't work. All right. We'll get back to the Dolphins in a second here. Let's look at tonight. Week 8 gets going. Vikings and Rams. Uh, you got the, I guess, Cooper Cup trade situation, uh, you know, trade rumors that are out there. The Vikings suffered their first loss of the season last week. Who do we like in this game? And should Cooper Cup owners hope that he's traded? I probably would say no to that. It's just because he's so involved with Matthew Stafford and his offense. You know, if he goes to Tampa Bay just because Liam Cohen was on the Rams staff last year, he's the offense coordinator for the Bucs, and losing Godwin now down to Evans for four weeks, that's the preferred destination. Like if he goes to Kansas City at this point, which I don't think is going to happen after they make the Hopkins trade, but still you never know what the Chiefs might do. Um, then it would be a little bit problematic. Not that going to Patrick Mahomes is a bad thing, but just going to a different system, I don't think would be the best thing to maximize his value. You know, you saw the one game that uh, Puka Nakua was not on the field with Cup in week two. Uh, Cup got hurt in week three. But in that week two game, 21 targets, 14 catches, 100 plus yards and a touchdown. Like that's what he's capable of doing whenever Puka's not there. And even when Puka's there, which hopefully might happen tonight, I don't think so, but uh, probably next week based on how he's practicing, um, he's still a very, you know, complimentary if not lead receiver uh for matthew stafford so this is his best destiny this is best team to be with for his fantasy value tampa bay would be a close second uh in terms of tonight you know i'm, I'm playing cup if he's out there uh i'm avoiding the rest of the rams pass catchers you know two two at well maybe in a desperate situation jordan whittington is not going to play so don't have to worry about that and then kyron williams has been fantastic i'm not ready to go back to stafford yet just because cup is back on the field he's yet to top 17 fantasy points in leagues where you get six points for passing touchdowns so it's not exactly been a good year for him so far and then for Minnesota, you're starting all the regulars. Look, they the, the 
Darnold's been struggling the last two games, but he's still got the opportunity to be 20 plus points, uh, especially against this defense. Jefferson's the best receiver in fantasy and uh, Jordan Addison, complimentary piece. Maybe TJ Hawkinson plays. We'll find out. And then Aaron Jones is a must start running back. All right, let's look at the Dolphins now. Dolphins Sunday, one o'clock hosting the Cardinals uh, is to a start right away. And what else do we like? It's just a matter of what you're looking at. Like, I would start him over Baker Mayfield now, who's the number two quarterback in fantasy because Baker doesn't have his guys. I would start him over Brock Purdy. I would start him over Geno Smith, who leads the NFL in passing yards because he doesn't have DK Metcalf, most likely. So there are a lot of different things that play. I start him over Mahomes, you know, but Mahomes hasn't exactly been a good fantasy quarterback, even though he, he may be uh, still in the conversation for MVP, although Lamar Jackson is probably running away with it. Uh, but in any event, look, Tua, he's not coming back from a shoulder or knee or ankle or one of those situations where you want to see how he's going to look from a physical standpoint. You know the situation. If he avoids contact, he should stay in the game and be 100%, and that's what we hope to see. He was so good at that last year. It was really surprising how he tried to take on DeMar Hamlin in that play against Buffalo. And I hope he's learned his lesson. So if he stays on the field, he's got a chance to be a top 10 quarterback rest of the season. And yes, if I have him, I'm probably starting him tonight. And we, everyone's a go sorry, the on the Dolphins side. Everyone's a go. Yeah, everyone's a go. You know, you, the, the one wrinkle that I do want to see, because it was, it was a one game sample size of not John U. Smith being involved. The last three games, we've seen John U. Smith much more involved. And again, that goes back to, was it Mike McDaniel sort of catering the game plan a little bit more simpler to, you know, Tyler Huntley. Uh, I think that's probably the case, but you know, John should be on your radar. If he has another quality outing, then we know he's going to be probably a factor for at least the foreseeable future. But I hope it just doesn't take away from what Tua and Waddle do. Waddle was excellent in week one. You know what Tyreek's got, you know, the ability to be. So I think they're both starting against the Cardinals. You know, say they, they did a great job last week in terms of stopping the run, but I think that's just because the Chargers are so one dimensional at this point. It's going to be hard, I think, to stop Devon H. and Raheem Mostert. Jamie, I want to ask you here about the Ravens and Browns, all right? On the Browns side of things, how does the addition now of Jameis Winston affect what's going on there? And for the Ravens, I, I mean, Derrick Henry, What? let's start there. Most drafts this year, where was Derrick Henry being selected? And if he continues having this season, where will he be selected next year? It's crazy because at 30 to be doing this, it's it's unheard of. You know, you, you, re, very few running backs at his age do what he's doing. And it just speaks to, I think, you know, first off, his physical ability because he's an alien, you know, to run that fast at his size and still be able to, you know, do it at the speed he's doing. He was, he was clocked at over 21 miles an hour, you know, in that game uh, Monday night against Tampa Bay. So, you know, he's still getting the job done. And if they could throw him the ball a little bit more, he would be a, a superstar. I, I'll probably still have the same reservations that I had this year, you know, which I think a lot of people shared was that again, the age is, is just something you have to worry about because we know father time for the most part is undefeated, but maybe Derek Henry is going to stiff arm, stiff arm father time and say, stay away. Um, we had this conversation that if we were redrafting for this year right now, he would be a top three pick and he was going in round two uh, to answer your question. So, um, he's been, he's been one of the best values, even for that selection. And he's just been fantastic. You know, one of my big whiffs, just because I didn't think I, I liked him. I just didn't think he would be this. So isn't the risk then worth the reward going into next season's fantasy draft? Yeah, we'll see. You know, I, I'm curious to see what they do now that they're going to have another running back in the mix. They're not going to take Derrick Henry off the field for significant stretches, but you know, Keaton Mitchell was a guy that they liked last year. He's expected to return within the next three weeks. Um, he gives them a little bit different speed element. Not that justice Hill hasn't been a good complimentary option. So we'll see if they, you know, decide to maybe as they start to realize their 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 playoff aspirations and what they want to do, you know, come December, January, and and hopefully for them February, uh, do they decide to maybe ease back on Derrick Henry a little bit and then we see how things look, you know, somebody else getting touches. But I mean, that's just splitting hairs. He's just been fantastic. So yes, the risk is probably worth the reward next season. It'll just be what happens at the end of the year. He does have a lot of mileage on his body as well, so you have to take that into account. And then I didn't answer your Browns question, but in terms of Jameis Winston. I think it just makes things a little bit more free for them because the thing that's different for Jameis compared to Deshaun, Deshaun has been sort of escaping clean pockets. He hasn't looked comfortable back there really for the majority of the season. Part of that is the offensive line has been a disaster. Uh, but Jameis, you know, he's YOLO. He doesn't care. He's, you know, sees a receiver with, you know, half an inch of an opening and he thinks he's going to throw it there. He's going to throw it. So you'll get some big games. You'll get some turnovers. You'll get some, you know, wow moments. You know, he's, he's must-see TV. Um, David Njoku has become, you know, has the ability right now to be, a must-start tight end. You just saw that with the first game without Amari Cooper, 14 targets, 10 catches. Um, Jerry Judy, Cedric Tillman just had eight catches for 81 yards. He should be on your radar. Um, it's going to be fun to see, and you know, hopefully Nick Chubb gets going as well. Chiefs and Raiders. If Patrick Mahomes is your starting quarterback, is he still playable? And what do we do if DeAndre Hopkins is ready to play this weekend? So 
I, I think Hopkins would be a number three receiver. You know, it's not like you're just putting in Devontae Adams back with Aaron Rodgers or Amari Cooper just getting a significant quarterback upgrade. Um, Hopkins has been banged up, you know, and and there's, you know, could it be the, the, the similar situation to what Adams was dealing with with the hamstring injury, you know, in quotes? Um, or is he really, you know, dealing with something? He, he had a knee injury in the preseason, and this is a complicated system to pick up. But – they're so beat up at the receiver spot right now. Juju Smith-Schuster's out. No Rashi Rice. No Marquise Brown. You know, they could probably give him a handful of plays. He's such a smart receiver that will pick it up right away. I would be a little bit cautious to start him, but it's exciting now to get him with the quarterback upgrade. And in terms of Mahomes, I'm not ready to go back to him right away, even if Hopkins plays this week. It's a good matchup against the Raiders, but he's had some good matchups along the way. He's just not throwing touchdowns. You know, he had a 300-yard game against the Saints a few weeks ago. Um, would have been a 21-point game, which is something that we're begging for from him at this point. But he throws the ball that hits off Juju's hands in the end zone to get the interception. That turns uh, a, a six-point play into an eight-point negative, you know, with the minus two that he loses the six on top of it. So he's got six touchdown passes, eight interceptions. They're just running the ball when they get in the red zone, and it's working for them. They're winning games. So I don't think it's going to change until we get some quality play at the receiver spot, and that might not happen until the end of the year. Jamie, who will be the big waiver wire pickups this week? So a lot of it at the receiver position, just because of the injuries, you know, you lose Chris Godwin and Mike Evans. We're going to see who steps up in Tampa Bay's offense. Jalen McMillan is my favorite of the, the guys that are there just because he's a rookie played in the slot in Washington. He could play the Chris Godwin role, which is the Cooper cup role, which could be fantastic for him as we've seen from Godwin, or if he plays the Mike Evans role, he'll get some opportunities down the field. He did have eight targets in that game against the Ravens last week. Sterling Shepard is a guy that's been, you know, bouncing around the league, um, at least from the Giants to the Bucks the last couple of seasons. And we'll see if he benefits as potentially the slot guy. So a couple guys from Tampa Bay, Juwan Jennings with the Brandon Ayuk injury. He's out for the season. Jennings in week three went nuts when there was no Debo Samuel and no uh, George Kittle. So he's somebody you want to keep an eye on. He's hurt right now, but uh, we know Ayuk is not coming back. There really wasn't a good running back to pick up this week. So Jalen Warren is the best of the group. Um, you know, he did some nice things and as the second guy for – Pittsburgh behind Najee Harris in the first game with Russell Wilson. So maybe he's back to being a potential flex. Tua was the best quarterback. You know, he was available in about 49% of leagues on CBSports.com. And again, we know what the upside is there for him. And then if you miss on him, Russell Wilson, big game and, you know, against the Jets, maybe he's going to have some big opportunities moving forward. Uh, Long term, Drake May's done a nice job so far for the Patriots. So he's got a chance to maybe help you in the fantasy playoffs. And then a few tight ends have emerged. Uh, Kate Otten with the injuries in Tampa Bay. Hunter Henry's been very good the two games with, uh, with uh, with Drake May and then deeper leagues, Jatavion Sanders. I don't like that Andy Dalton's not starting this week and Bryce Young is, uh, but Sanders had you know back to back quality outings there for the Panthers. And what about for injuries? What are we keeping an eye on today? So um, we got to see what's happening in uh, in San Francisco. Debo was hospitalized uh, as we know with pneumonia, but he did show up at the facility, so maybe he's trending in the right direction. Can hopefully get back out there. Same thing with Jawan Jennings. We'll see what's happening with him. Um, Puka Nakua is just worth keeping an eye on tonight. You know, they listed him as limited um, in practice. So I doubt he plays this week with the short week, but, you know, an extra 10 days to repair. He's certainly someone you want to keep an eye on. Um, Jonathan Taylor returned to practice on a limited basis. That would be great to have him back, you know, no matter who they're playing. It's a tough matchup against Houston, but I don't care if he's out there. I'm starting him. Uh, Jacoby Myers could be the number one receiver for the Raiders. He's missed the last two games, but practice on a limited basis. So that's a step in the right direction. Chris Olave missed last week's game with the concussion, returned on a limited basis. So hopefully he gets back out there. Um, I think that's the, the main ones that we're looking at. Excellent job as always, Jamie. Week 8 gets going tonight. Vikings and Rams. Tell everybody how they can catch you leading up to tonight's game and then throughout the weekend. Yep, check us out. CBSSports.com, CBS Sports HQ. It's our 24-hour streaming network. Uh, you can always check out our podcast, Fantasy Football Today, wherever podcasts are found. And of course, you can always follow me on Twitter at Jamie Eisberg. Awesome job. Thank you, Jamie. Appreciate you, man. Enjoy the weekend. You got it. Thank you, bud.